the top stories tonight and why news president rodrigo duterte to address the filipino nation tonight national task force chairman and department of national defense secretary delphine lorenzana believes that metro manila is ready to shift back to general community quarantine after august 18 if the trend of covid 19 cases go down Education Secretary Lenore Briones confirms yet again that August 24 is the date for school, op school reopening. Authorities warn, beware of face shield scammers. New Zealand marks 101 days without community transmission of COVID-19. Overweight and obese people more likely to develop Alzheimer's disease, a new study finds. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, August 10, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the globe. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, President Rodrigo Duterte will address the Filipino nation tonight. Meanwhile, Malacanang responds to the suggestion of MECQ extension in Metro Manila until end of August, saying there must be a balance between the economy and public health. Our Malacanang correspondent, Rosa Licoz, will tell us why. The palace says it cannot preempt the decision of the Interagency Task Force against COVID-19 on the fate of community quarantine. There are only four days left before the two-week community quarantine in various parts of the country expires. According to presidential spokesperson Harry Roque, the effects of the recent implementation of Modified Enhanced Community Quarantine or MECQ over Metro Manila and nearby areas will not be felt now. According to experts, the MECQ implementation impact will be seen two to three weeks after its enforcement since the incubation period for COVID-19 is 14 days. But according to former National Task Force against COVID-19 Special Advisor Dr. Anthony Lechon, to flatten the curve of the COVID-19 pandemic, the government has to extend MECQ in NCR and other provinces for one month. This will also be an opportunity to intensify the healthcare capacity of the country. However, according to Secretary Roque, the decision to extend MECQ is one that has to be made by the IATF and President Duterte. He adds the government has to balance the issue between public health and the economy. Several IATF and cabinet members went to Davao City on Monday for a meeting with President Duterte. Tonight, the chief executive is expected to make a public address. Rosa Licoz, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, National Task Force Chairman and Department of National Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana believes that Metro Manila is ready to move back to general community quarantine after August 18. Here's why from Lea Ilagan. If the trend of COVID-19 cases goes down in Metro Manila, it will be ready for a GCQ according to National Task Force Chairman and Department of National Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana. On Saturday, August 8, the DOH reported over 4,000 new cases of coronavirus disease 2019. The next day, the Health Department recorded over 3,000 cases. DILD Secretary Eduardo Año says he is optimistic that the case trend will continue to go down until August 18. Año adds they want to open some establishments for the sake of our economy, but they need to balance it with public health. Titingnan natin yung ano, yung uh, figures. Pero ako ay uh, am optimistic na with the 15 days MECQ, bababa yan. 
ang kailangan lang ay sumunod. No? Huwag na tayong maging pasaway. Stay at home. SILG Anyo also appeals to the public to just stay at home until the MECQ ends. With 15 days staying at home, marami tayong virus dyan na mapapatay kasi uh, incubation period of 14 days, talaga naman mamamatay yung virus. No? Bago pa makalipat sa ibang tao, mamatay na yung virus. So please do your part. Secretary Anyo has earlier advised to always observe physical distancing and wear a face mask even at home to avoid contracting the deadly disease. Ang konteksto kasi nito ay yung uh, lumalabas sa mga datos na nakukuha natin tsaka yung mga pag-iikot natin sa mga LGUs ay yung uh, hawaan ay nangyayari sa mga pamilya. For example, nakuha niya sa kanyang trabaho, pag-uwi niya sa kanyang bahay, kaagad mabilis yung pag, uh, pagkalat ng uh, sakit doon sa loob ng bahay. Nasa punto na kasi tayo na we have to do everything to stop the spread. Yan yung konteksto nung statement ng Sekretary Anyo na kahit sa bahay ay mag-maintain ng social distancing at gumamit din ng face mask kasi lumalabas na yung mga magulang, no? lumalabas yung iba at nagtatrabaho, doon ang gagaling yung sakit. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The country's lawmakers in the present Congress will soon convene to harmonize their version of the Bayanihan II law. Here's why from Ray Pelayo. The House of Representatives approved today the Bayanihan II bill on the third and final reading. 242 representatives voted affirmative and six negative on the House Bill 6953 or the Bayanihan to recover as one act. It appropriates 27.5 billion pesos for health, including the field health coverage for COVID-19, additional health workers and their benefits, acquisition of personal protective equipment, and establishing isolation and quarantine facilities. 71 billion pesos is for cash for work and additional capital for government financial institution to fund loan programs. Agriculture, Transportation and Tourism share totaled 40.1 billion pesos, 8.9 billion pesos for education, including programs for digital education. The Department of Social Welfare and Development and the local government units will get 13.5 billion pesos. Programs of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Assistance for Athletes have been allotted with 1 billion pesos. House Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano said they will set a bicameral conference with the Senate for the ratification of the final version of the Bayanihan to recover as one act. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Meralco announces a power cut for this month while assuring no disconnection will happen until the end of September. Joan Nano tells us why. As prices of electricity in the spot market and independent power producers go down, Meralco has announced power rate reductions for four consecutive months now. Electricity rates are now down by almost 21 centavos per kilowatt hour. This is equivalent to a reduction of around 41 pesos from the total bill of residential customers who consume 200 kilowatt hours. This also means a 62 peso decrease for households who consume 300 kilowatt hours, while for residents who use 400 kilowatt hours, their electric bills will be reduced by 82 pesos and minus 103 pesos from the electric bill for every 500 kilowatt hour of consumption. As Metro Manila and other nearby towns revert to modified enhanced community quarantine, Meralco assures to continue meter reading to get their customers' actual consumption and to avoid the recurrence of bill shock. Our meter readers are now out there in the field, nagbabasa ng metro, sinisiguro na makuha yung konsumo ng bawat customer namin. At uh, nang sa ganun, yung actual kilowatt hour consumed lang ang uh, uh, maging basis ng kanyang bill. Meanwhile, although a lot of people have lost their jobs, which means they cannot afford to pay their utility bills, Meralco says it has yet to consider to offer promissory note for customers who really cannot pay their electric bill until the end of September. Instead, the power distributor assures no disconnection of services will happen until the end of next month. We are uh, going to be very considerate to all our customers. Kaya nga namin in-extend hanggang dulo ng September para kahit pa paano maging... Uh, uh, tulong itong hakbang na ito sa ating mga customers. 
Joe Anano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Philippine Coast Guard or PCG continues to inspect watercraft in various ports and waterways in the country. This weekend, the PCG Task Group Seaport inspected more than 1,400 vessels and watercraft across the country. PCG personnel also conducted medical screening on fishermen and other persons that use the port areas and waterways. In Boracay, Coast Guard personnel patrolled the coast on Sunday. Fishermen are cautioned that during the rainy season, it's best to be updated with weather news to avoid any sea mishaps. Fisher folks are also advised to coordinate with the nearest Coast Guard substation before venturing into sea. Also, PCG substations on Boracay and uh, in Dagupan continue the marking, marking motor bankas for the implementation of the safety, security, and environmental numbering, or SSEN. A uh, 525-bed capacity quarantine facility opens in Paranaque this month. That is the biggest in the country so far. Asher Kadapan Jr. details why. The national government, in joint efforts with the private sectors, builds another mega quarantine with 525 beds, the biggest in the country so far. According to Secretary Vince Dizon, the Deputy Chief Implementer of the National Action Plan against COVID-19, its partial operation is expected to start on August 25 with a 300-bed capacity. It aims to isolate mild and asymptomatic COVID-19 cases as more individuals get infected with the disease. Thankfully, a lot of the cases are mild and asymptomatic cases up to 98.5 to 99 percent. But we're going to have to house them no? and uh, allow them to get better uh, for roughly two weeks. And these are the facilities that are going to house them. Meanwhile, the national government emphasizes the need for more quarantine facilities as existing ones are already about 70% full. It targets a total of about 20,000 bed capacity for more than 500 quarantine facilities to be completed before the year ends. This is on top of the facilities built by the local government units. Dizon further explains its importance as the number of COVID-19 confirmed cases is expected to increase due to the shift to a more relaxed community quarantine level, allowing more industries to operate, hence higher probability of transmission. Nakita natin nung June and July, kapag nagbubukas tayo, uh, inevitable na dadami ang kaso dahil mas marami nang lumagabas, mas maraming interaction, pero ang kailangan ng natin is maghanda. Despite the scarcity in health workers, the National Action Plan against COVID-19 plans to deploy about 150 medical personnel from the Department of Health to manage the facility. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Education Secretary Leonor Briones confirms yet again that August 24 is the date for the school reopening. But an education official says the country is not yet ready for such move. Dante Amento will join us tonight to tell us why live. Uh, Dante, despite concerns and objections from various groups who oppose the uh, opening of classes two weeks from now, why did Secretary Briones reiterate August 24 is the big day? Yes, Harleen, Education Secretary Leonor Briones is confident with their preparations for the class reopening. A lot of simulations have been conducted where teachers and students participated. Besides, DepEd cannot afford to sacrifice the Filipino children's education. The country will be left behind by other nations if classes don't open soon. In fact, Harleen, in Southeast Asia, only the Philippines and Vietnam have, have not conducted or have not sent their students back to school amid the coronavirus pandemic. Today, DepEd showcased the preparations of various schools for different learning modalities as part of the Handang Isip, Handang Bukas team of school year 2020-2021. How the Basic Education Learning Continuity Plan or BELCP was also highlighted. 
but the Parents Teachers Alliance or PTA strongly opposes the class reopening. For uh, former DepEd Assistant Secretary and PTA Chairman Emilio June Abilita, DepEd is not yet ready. For instance, the printing of the modules is not yet complete two weeks before the scheduled class opening. He even challenges DepEd, but the Education Department responds to his challenge. Isa lang tanong ko, sabihin lang ng DepEd, natapos na lahat ang modules ngayon, ginawa, in all divisions all over the country, I stop talking at kung kailan sila magsisimula ng reproduction at who will shoulder the cost of reproduction? Meron tayong report sa mga divisions natin na uh, mayroong 80% to 100% ang stage of SLM printing for uh, the first quarter. Harleen, the Parents and Teachers Alliance also appeals to, pre to the President to defer the class reopening for two to three months. The group adds the online learning modality should be removed due to the issue of poor internet connectivity and uh, focus on the modular instead. The group hopes that uh, President Duterte will make an immediate response to their appeal. May problema pa tayo sa gadgets, sa mga bata. Ang sinasabi ko nga sa DepEd, kalimutan natin yung online na yan. No? Even professionals are having a hard time connecting with each other. In uh, addition, Harleen, based on DepEd's calendar, the school year will end on April 30, 2021. Because of the compressed school year, DepEd authorizes the conduct of distance learning activities on Saturdays. Uh, should religious uh, considerations prohibit these Saturday activities, they shall be undertaken sun on Sundays. In all, the total classes days in 2020, uh, 2021 school calendar will be 203 days. Arlene? Uh, Dante, in your report, the uh, Parents and Teachers Alliance is asking who will shoulder the uh, reproduction of modules. What was the DepEd's answer to this? Will it be coming from the uh, public funds? Yes, uh, Arlene, according to DepEd Undersecretary Annalyn Sevilla, there was 9 billion pesos a national funding which was or which has been downloaded already to regions and uh, schools division offices and uh, some other funding sources are the special education fund uh, contributions and maintenance and other operating expenses at the school level early okay dante let's clarify since there's no face-to-face -face classes what about the uh, students extra curriculars Yes, uh, Harleen, extracurricular and co-curricular activities that uh, involve gathering of large number of learners such as science fairs, showcase of portfolios, trade fairs, school sports, uh, campus journalism, festival of talents, job fairs, uh, career orientation and other similar activities are cancelled for the school year except for those that can be conducted through online platform while the conduct of activities related to Palarong Pambansa shall be uh, decided separately by the Palarong Pambansa. Harley. Thank you so much, Dante Amento, for that report. The Health Department has yet to decide whether to recommend relaxing the anti-coronavirus measures in areas under Modified Enhanced Community Quarantine or MECQ. Ayoko Miguel explains why. The Department of Health would see the effects of the modified enhanced community quarantine in the country in two to three weeks' time. This is why, according to the DOH, they cannot conclude yet if they are going to ease or restrict quarantine measures in areas under MECQ. According to the Health Department, they have to consider a lot of factors before deciding on what to recommend and be implemented after two weeks of MECQ. So, hindi natin uh, masasabi pa sa ngayon kung ano na talaga yung mga nangyayari. We will see the effect of this maybe three weeks to one month nga eh. Kasi titignan natin yung 14 days na incubation period kung may mga nadagdag pa. Titignan natin kung yung health system natin medyo nakahinga ba siya dito sa two weeks na binigay sa atin at nakapag-recalibrate tayo. 
According to Undersecretary Vergere, they are also unsure if the NCR will go back to GCQ, which is less strict. She adds experts are still studying the rise of cases and the condition of the hospital's capacity in the country. The local government's measures are also important to prevent further transmission of COVID-19, especially in barangays in the NCR with clustering. Hirap ako uh, magbigay sa inyo na oo, hindi. Dahil, uh, syempre, ito una-una sa IATF ang gagaling yung mga ganyan. Ano. It is not just the cases that we look for. Uh, kapag ka tayo ay nag assess ng isang sitwasyon, di ba lagi natin tinitignan din yung capacity ng health system. Meanwhile, according to the University of the Philippines Octa Research, their case projection by the end of August has gone down due to MECQ. From its 220,000 case projection, the number decreases to 170,000 to 190,000 cases. According to Dr. Guido David, the R0 of reproduction number also went down in weeks MECQ. UP Octa Research also suggested that the extension of MECQ in the country could flatten the curve of the disease. It's very possible even end of August baka kaya na ma-flatten yung curve. Pero like I said, uh, flattening of the curve is not the end. Hindi ibig sabihin katapusan na to. But hopefully, pag nag-flatten curve, maybe we can already sustain it kahit mag-GCQ na tayo. Dr. Guido David explains, aside from community quarantine to prevent transmission and doubling of cases, it is important that the public work hand-in-hand -hand and become responsible in observing protocols, especially the wearing of face masks. The DOH also advises that even people inside their homes should still wear a mask where there are elderly and vulnerable people. Physical distancing should also be observed. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives approved today on third and final reading a measure that will grant scholarships to aspiring medical students amid the coronavirus pandemic. House Bill 6756, or the Medical Scholarship and Return Service Program Act, is seen to answer to the lack of doctors in rural areas. The measure would also address the lack of physicians in areas hit by the COVID-19 pandemic as scholarship recipients could be asked to serve in hotspots. Meanwhile, the uh, Better Normal Bill has been approved in the House of Representatives. The how if House Bill 6864 or the proposed Better Normal for the Workplace, Communities and Public Spaces Act of 2020 is passed into law, Filipinos will be required to wear face masks and practice physical distancing in public places nationwide. Temperature checks would also be a requirement. Public transportation would operate as usual, but motorcycle taxis would still be prohibited on the roads. Physical distancing would be required inside vehicles and even in queuing and ticketing areas. The Department of Health or DOH has set a date when to start the clinical trial of the Japanese anti-flu drug Avigan. According to the DOH, there are 100 patients who will undergo the trial to determine the efficacy of the drug against COVID-19. Aiko Miguel details why. The clinical trial for the Japanese anti-flu drug Avigan was postponed last August 10 because of documents that must be settled. But according to the DOH, on August 17, the trial of the drug on 100 patients will definitely begin. The DOH will release the names of which hospitals the Avigan clinical trial will be conducted. Basically, uh, we start on August 17, uh, 100 patients ang ating uh, ire recruit uh, in hospitals, we will be posting the hospitals that will be included here. So we just wait for uh, for that start. Uh, ready na rin naman talaga. The drugs are here. Protocol has been approved by FDA and our ethics boards. According to the health department, there are conditions for a COVID-19 patient to be part of the Avigan trial. They also have to get a patient's consent to be part of the trial. Meron tayong 100 patients na i-recruit uh, para dito sa iba't ibang mga ospital na mapipili no, para dito sa trial na ito. Kailangan 18 years old to 74 years old. Tapos, hindi ka pwede kapag ka ay ayaw pumayag na mag-contraceptive uh, method no, while you are taking Avigan. Uh, Mayroong mga coexisting na bacterial infection. Uh, marami pang mga conditions for ineligibility no, para hindi makasali dito. 
The DOH also explains, it is important that the country takes part in a trial spearheaded by other countries to test the possible cure for COVID-19. Meanwhile, the health department has prepared budget for the possible procurement of COVID-19 vaccine when it becomes available in the market. According to Undersecretary Vergere, they will allot 2.4 billion pesos from the 2021 budget, but that will also depend on the price of vaccine. The government prioritizes to provide COVID-19 vaccine to the 20 million less fortunate Filipinos. I, Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. There is no privacy for government officials in high-level positions. That's according to Senate President Vicente Soto III. This was the reaction of the Senate leader after PhilHealth President and CEO Ricardo Morales said in a statement over the weekend that he regrets that his privacy was supposedly not respected after a photo of his medical certificate was publicized. The medical certificate was submitted by Morales' camp to the Senate Committee of the Whole, which indicates his doctor's advice to take a leave of absence as he needs to complete the chemotherapy for his his lymphoma. The agency says it was submitted as required to request to the Senate his online presence instead of his physical presence. The Senate president adds the public is being shortchanged when public officials cannot perform their work due to prevailing poor health conditions. For Soto, it would be best for the PhilHealth chief to resign if he cannot carry out his work properly due to his condition and if recovery won't be possible in a certain period of time. Uh, as, a, as a government official, there is nothing private about you anymore. Ganun yun eh, di ba? Kaya nga may kasabihan that if um, you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Maganda ba yun na uh, you're holding a very important uh, public office and then uh, tinatago mo yung help mo? In a television interview, Morales says he is awaiting for his superior's decision on his intentions to take a medical leave. However, PhilHealth Executive Vice President and COO Arnel De Jesus will not be able to attend due to an unforeseen medical emergency. Despite this, Soto says the Senate probe on the alleged corruption in the agency will continue. According to Soto, new witnesses and resource persons will attend tomorrow's hearing to shed light on various allegations against the agency. A source says one of them's resigned head executive assistant of Morales, Etrobal Laborte. Also invited in tomorrow's hearing is the Department of Information and Communications Technology or DICT to provide information on the alleged overpriced budget for the IT program of PhilHealth. There will be other issues that will be brought up. There will be new evidences that will be unearthed. There will be other testimonies from other resource persons. At lahat ng hindi maaaring umaten na pinatawag namin, it's your lookout na hindi ka makikinabang doon sa hearing at makakapag-isigli ka ng sarili mo. According to the Senate President, the Senate is willing to provide physical security to witnesses, including resigned PhilHealth anti-fraud legal officer attorney Thorson Keith and PhilHealth board member Alejandro Cabadi. Soto adds he will also recommend placing the witnesses under the Witness Protection Program of the Department of Justice. The Senate leader hopes the issue hounding the PhilHealth and even the sacking of officials involved in the corruption in the agency will be discussed by President Rodrigo Duterte in his upcoming public address. Now, here's a glimpse of what's the weather like in parts of the country. The southwest monsoon will bring rains over parts of Luzon. State Weather Bureau Pagasa says the Habagat is enhanced by former tropical depression Ferdi, which exited the Philippine Area of Responsibility or PAR this morning and has intensified into tropical storm with international name Mekala. Monsoon rains will be felt over Ilocos region and the provinces of Zambales and Bataan. Occasional rains, meanwhile, will be felt 
will be experienced over Metro Manila, Cordillera Administrative Region, Cagayan Valley, rest of Central Luzon, Calabar Zone, and Mimaropa. Possible flash floods or landslides may occur due to moderate with at times heavy rains. Localized thunderstorms will cause partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers over Bicol region, Visayas, and Bindanao. On the other hand, a new tropical depression was seen outside Par, located at 2,465 kilometers east-northeast of extreme northern Luzon. However, Pagasa says it is not likely to enter Par and has no direct effect to the country. The country's Department of Health advises the public to be vigilant and not to entertain calls from individuals who introduce themselves as members of the DOH contact tracing team. The DOH emphasizes it does not have a contact tracing team. So if you uh, encounter such individuals, just follow these safety protocols. First, do not give out your personal information and end the call. Second, Take note of the number and block it. Three, report the incident to DOH's call center hotline through telephone numbers 632-8651-7800, local 5003-5004, or email callcenter at doh.gov.ph. The Philippine National Police Anti-Cybercrime Group investigates cases of face shields online selling scam authorities advise the public to be cautious in making transactions online to avoid avoid falling victim to scammers vincent arboleda will tell us why several pictures and statements of victims of face shield selling scammers have been making rounds on the internet most of the victims who were scammed had already made partial payment for the goods but the supplier or seller did not show up. Because of this, the PNP Anti-Cybercrime Group or ACG is investigating the incidents of face shield scam. According to PNP ACG, individuals who will be proven manipulating the price and demand of face shields in the market will face appropriate charges. In San Juan, Police Colonel Jaime Santos discovered the modus operandi of these scammers. Santos said, these scammers use the social media for swindling with the middleman or resellers as their victim. May magpo-post dyan as buyer, tapos may magiging interesado. Sasabihin ng buyer, kailangan ko ng 500,000 pieces. Base ito sa interview namin, ha, sa mga na-biktima. The middleman will then have an agreement with the buyer for the supply of the face shield. Afterwards, a supplier with the same or greater number of face shields will make an offer to the middleman at a lower price but will require a down payment. Mag-video call sila or picture, so legit na legit, no? After that, babalikan uli ni middleman si buyer. The middleman will then negotiate with the buyer to deposit the down payment directly to the supplier's bank account, only requiring a bank receipt as proof. When the deposit is made, that is when the three will agree to meet up for the delivery of the goods. On the day of the delivery, the supplier will not show up, and because the buyer has already paid for the down payment, the middleman is then forced to return the amount to the buyer. 500,000 na hinulog niya. Dapat magbabayad siya ng 250,000 na hindi niya nalalaman si buyer at si supplier isa. Santos adds that another modus operandi of scammers is asking buyers for a portion of the payment but will not show up when a meeting is agreed upon. So authorities warn the public to be cautious in making online transactions. Should anyone fall victim to the scam, authorities advise the public to call on the PNP ACG hotline 0998 598-8116 or report it via their website acg.pnp.gov.ph Meanwhile, the Department of Health clarifies that they are not calling for a mandatory use of face shields. In carriage, no? Uh, itong face shields. But uh, hindi pa natin sinasabi na mandatory yan. Although there has been other agencies, no? Uh, na nagpalabas no? isang linggo na mandatory for these specific sectors. The DOH said they are also looking into the standard retail price of face shields as it may depend on the materials used to provide appropriate protection to the wearer. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. 
Meanwhile, the country's Department of Health says that almost 7,000 new cases were reported today, raising the total confirmed cases of coronavirus infection in the Philippines to 136,638. The National Capital Region reported the most new cases with more than 4,000. There were 66,186 total active cases of the disease in the country as of today. Of those active cases, 91.6% are in mild condition. We have lost 24 more patients. But through our fervent prayers, medical interventions, and sacrifices of our medical frontliners, 633 more people have won their battle against the invisible enemy. That brings the total recoveries nationwide to 68,159. Thanks be to God. And let's take a closer look at the updated count of coronavirus cases around the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has now reached a total of more than 19.8 million confirmed cases in 188 countries, regions, and sovereignty. That's after more than 273,000 new cases were added since yesterday around the world. The fast-spreading disease has claimed a total of over 731,000 lives. In the last 24 hours, more than 6,000 death cases were recorded in various countries. But as of today, over 12 million patients across the globe have recovered from the new coronavirus Rapid infection. Yes. Thanks be to God. Here is the updated count coronavirus cases in countries worst hit by the pandemic. The USA has passed 5 million cases, while Brazil has had more than 100,000 deaths linked to COVID-19. India's caseload surpasses 2.2 million as of today. The Americas remain as the region with the most cases of COVID-19. And for the news abroad, here's Elsie Marcos live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening, Elsie. What have you got for us tonight? William, today, New Zealand marks 101 days without community transmission of COVID-19. We will also talk with our colleague in Africa to tell us about the situation in South Africa, which has the fifth highest case load of COVID-19 in the world. And I will tell you why more and more Americans have given up their citizenship, according to a new research. Go ahead, Elsie. Please tell us why. Today, New Zealand marked 101 days without community transmission of COVID-19. From the first known case imported into New Zealand on February 26 to the last case of community transmission detected on, on May 1, elimination took 65 days. New Zealand is one of a small number of jurisdictions, including mainland China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, South Korea, Vietnam, Mongolia, Australia, and Fiji, pursuing COVID-19 containment or elimination. Most have had new outbreaks except New Zealand, Taiwan, and Fiji. New Zealand has relied on three types of measures to get rid of the virus. One, border controls to stop COVID-19 from entering the country. Two, a lockdown and physical distancing to stop community transmission. And three, case-based controls using testing, contact tracing, and quarantine. These measures have achieved low case numbers and deaths compared with high-income countries in Europe and North America that pursued a suppression strategy. Although Australia has adopted very similar responses to the pandemic and most territories are in the same position as New Zealand, Victoria State is seeing a significant resurgence. The key difference is that New Zealand committed relatively early to a clearly articulated elimination strategy and pursued aggressively. An intense lockdown proved highly effective at rapidly extinguishing the virus. Elimination of the virus appears to have allowed New Zealand to return to near-normal operation fairly rapidly, 
minimize economic damage compared with Australia, but the economic impact is likely to keep playing out over the coming months. The spike in confirmed coronavirus cases in South Africa that have surpassed half a million is a major problem that the government is still trying to pacify. Joining us tonight is one of our correspondents in Africa, Michael Laraya, to tell us why live. Michael? LC currently the South LC currently the South African country has the fifth highest number of cases in the world. But more than 550 cases with over 10,000 deaths linked to coronavirus disease 2018. Majority of its cases are confined in capital Pretoria, for, so the economy of the country, like other countries, is seriously hit. And according to the Department of Statistics, based on the quarterly labor force survey, the number of employed persons decreased by 38,000 to 16.4 million in the first quarter of the year mostly in the formal and agricultural sectors. While the number of unemployed persons increased by 344,000 to 7.1 million from the figures in the last quarter of 2019, although the statistics for the second quarter will be released this month. President Cyril Ramaphosa has told the citizens to remain vigilant and to continue to work together to reduce the number of new infections. South Africa, with a population of more than 55.7 million, imposed strict lockdowns in April and May that slowed the spread of the coronavirus. But as it began reopening in June, the infection rate started to rise again. The surge of coronavirus cases has made the healthcare professionals in the country exhausted and health service to nearly collapse. President Ramaphosa said last month that 28,000 hospital beds had been made available for COVID-19 patients, but the country still faced a serious shortage of doctors and nurses. Kelsey? Michael, what are the programs of the government to address unemployment? The government of South Africa, through its South Africa Social Security Agency, or SASA, has two programs during pandemic. First, the social grant give financial assistance of 350 runs every month, which started last May up to October of this year to all unemployed citizens in this country. Aside from that, social relief of distress is also available. In this category, applicants who experience disaster like house burns, suffering for, or from some serious health problems, the breadwinner died, or they have some small children to take care, they will receive 350 rands as well for three months and another three months if necessary. Elsie? What stage of reopening is South Africa at right now? What are the health protocols implemented by the government? Yes, Elsie, uh, wearing face masks is a must in this country park is open for exercise only but definitely not for gatherings curfew from 9 p.m to 4 a.m is being implemented as well and the ban of selling alcohol is not permitted by the government to pacify the coronavirus case in south africa i'll see thank you michael for that report Parents in New York State, USA, fear plans of reopening schools this coming fall semester. New York State under Governor Andrew Cuomo delegates the class reopening decision to local authorities. One of our correspondents in the USA, Miguel Ray de Leon, will tell us why. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced last Friday that local authorities should decide whether schools would accept students for in-person learning this coming fall semester. The 700 school district in New York should submit their reopening plans to the state's health department and education department, which the government gave the authority whether to accept or reject such plans. New York City has the largest school district in the U.S., which usually starts classes on September 10. Much of the school districts plan to either provide online learning or hybrid learning to their respective students. Mayor Bill de Blasio said they are committed to getting this right and will reopen safely. 
On the schools, you know, I've already said I want to hold New York City schools to a very tough standard, and that is that 3% standard over a seven-day period. If our average goes above 3% infection in New York City, we would not open schools. If it happened during the school year, we would close them. Meanwhile, parents in New York City are against bringing their children back to school facilities, mainly due to fear of contracting COVID-19. Ang mga bata dito, mahirap pang kontrolin. Kasi mga bata pa yan, malalaro pa sila. Hindi pa nila alam yung mga dapat na gawin nila para bilang isang bata ay eh, maiwasan nila ang pagkakahawa-hawa nila sa COVID. As a parent, mas gusto ko yung blended learning model nila na three days siya sa, sa bahay, online school, then two days siya sa school. Hindi ako sumayon sa reopening ng New York schools dahil napaka-risky ng mangyayari. Especially na meron pa rin tayong pandemic. Mag ano pa rin yung online schooling kasi for the past five months ganun naman yung naging system ng schooling sa New York so why not as well na ganun pa rin yung maging sistema online school According to the New York health officials, the low infection rate due to the strict lockdowns implemented by the state government resulted in just a 1% increase of infections in the past weeks Currently, New York State dropped to fourth place nationwide among states with the most numbers of COVID-19, with 420,000 cases next to California, Texas, and Florida, which are on the top three places respectively. Miguel Rey de Leon, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Elsewhere in France, a face mask must be worn in many parts of Paris from today after authorities impose new measures to curb a rise in infections in the capital. The new order applies to people aged 11 and over in crowded areas and in areas with heavy traffic, such as the banks along the River Seine and open, and open air markets, police said. More than 100 streets are covered by the order, according to a list sent out by the police. But the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe, and the Champs-Élysées, and several other tourist spots are exempt from the new rules. Face masks are already compulsory in enclosed public spaces in France. Violators risk of a fine of 135 euros. France had flattened the curb of new infections after a strict lockdown, but cases have been on the rise again since the start of July. And those are the reasons behind the news here in New Zealand and in other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you, Elsie Marcos. Stay safe there in Auckland, New Zealand. A person's body weight has indirect relationship with brain function and blood flow, a new study finds. Here's why from Jovic Bermas. Gaining weight more than a person's ideal body mass index reduces the activity in all regions of the brain, thus increasing the risk for Alzheimer's disease and other mental illness. This according to a new study recently published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. Scientists analyzed 35,000 functional neuroimaging scans using single photon emission computerized tomography or SPECT from more than 17,000 individuals to measure brain's blood flow and activity. Dr. Daniel Amen, the lead author of the study and founder of Amen Clinics, one of the leading brain-centered mental health clinics in the United States, said, this study shows that being overweight or obese seriously impacts brain activity and increases the risk for Alzheimer's disease as well as many other psychiatric and cognitive conditions. The study revealed low cerebral blood flow highly predicts if a person were likely to develop Alzheimer's disease or other mental health disorders such as depression, ADHD, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, traumatic brain injury, addiction, suicide, and other conditions. 
Remarkable patterns of gradual reduction of blood flow were found in virtually all regions of the brain across the spectrum of body weight classification from normal weight to overweight, obese, and morbidly obese. These were noted in participants while in resting state as well as while performing a concentration task. Dr. George Perry, editor-in-chief of the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease, stated, Dr. Amen and collaborators provide compelling evidence that obesity alters blood supply to the brain to shrink the brain and promote Alzheimer's disease. But there is hope. Dr. Amen added, brains can be improved when you put them in a healing environment by adopting brain-healthy habits such as healthy calorie-smart diet and regular exercise. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news, August 10, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I'm Angelo Castro III. And I am William Theo. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Have a great evening, everyone.